yeah how's it going so in this video you'll get to see how effective my new second version of my diy solar water heater is at heating water in the water tank um, i've got a probe in there measuring the temperature and i've recorded that over the last three weeks as i made tweaks to the system and um, we'll get to see how hot i got that water um, as you probably know this works in conjunction with a compost heat recovery system and with them working together is the reason it works so effectively um, and also the purpose of this system is to heat these greenhouse beds here the water is circulated through these beds in turn warming that soil um, currently i switched on last night and the soil has gone up 11 degrees overnight it's not even 24 hours yet the soil is now 30 degrees celsius down up from 18 degrees yesterday so you know i'm quite happy with how it's working um and coming up in the video um yeah i'll just detail the last three weeks and um talk about some improvements i think i can add another four or five degrees heating ability to the system over the next month so um yeah so so let's get started all right, quick overview of the system here. So before we start the video, so right here in front of the camera, we have the water storage tank shed. In that shed, there's a 80 liter water tank. It's fully insulated with R4 insulation. At the bottom of that, there is a water pump, circulation water pump. That water pump, it starts off, it pumps the water under the ground through a duct, through an insulated pipe. That pipe's been wrapped in insulation. It comes up here in the inside of this duct. It's a 50 meter run, so there's some losses in that. It does lose heat as it gets pumped. It goes over to the compost piles here. Currently I've got the air pumping through them, so I'll just switch that off. From there it goes through each of the piles alternately depending on when I set the timer. I'll explain that later. Currently the water's going through compost one and the solar light is on, meaning the solar water heat is on. The water's flowing through it. Here's the valves. So we have two compost heaps, both insulated, both with circulation water pipes in them. It comes out of that, it's going up into the solar because it's sunny all automatic it'll switch off when it's not sunny it'll come back out it'll go another 50 meters back so in total that's 100 meters of insulated pipe where there are losses it then goes into the greenhouse where it circulates through each of these three beds there's the insulated pipes there um, so as it circulates through these beds the intention is to heat these beds um, as the water pipes go through these beds there are losses it's losing its heat to the soil on the beds um, it then goes into the tank so i'm going to run the system without these beds in part of the video just to see how much heat i can generate without the losses of these beds so the only heat losses incurred in the system will be from the water storage tank and the water pipe so that'll give us a good idea of how much heat the compost heat recovery system solar heater and sand battery can generate so for data recording for this experiment i have recording probes in a few different places the first one i've got here is in the water tank it's currently 37.39 celsius i've got one in the non-heated in ground greenhouse bed a normal probe in the greenhouse one in the heated bed one in the compost currently 50.9 one on the second compost pile, currently 46.79 one outside, currently 18.5 and one in the solar water heater which is 41.6 so that's the um, temperature monitoring probes I'll be gathering data from yeah so for all the temperature gathering for this system I'm using Jali temperature probes here wireless temperature probes um, so when I first set them up uh, what I do is I lay them out together and just check the accuracy of them so as you can see I've just set two new ones up one is currently saying 19.63 degrees the other is saying 19.6 so basically they're basically giving the same reading so uh, the next step is I slide the probe into the stainless steel 
probe tube here to keep it nice and watertight and I just simply screw the gland on and tighten it up and that will go in the bed and that's it and yeah that's my connectors so we'll see how that goes Yeah, so I've run the system now for seven days using only the solar heater. These are the results. So in the day, I've had I've been lucky. I've had five days of sun there, um, and I've managed to get the water tank up to thirty degrees on those sunny days. However, without the compost uh, heating system running, it's just lost all that heat again at night and dropped right back down to where it started pretty much every day. And what's worse is we had a cloudy day here where we dropped and then we had another cloudy day here where we bottomed out and we bottomed out in the water tank at 13.84 degrees. So after today I'm going to switch on the compost heating and um, we'll see how that goes next. So here's my new dual pile heating system. Um, I'll run you through how it works but before I do that I'll talk about the problem I had last time. So last time I only had one pile just like this and I had a coil through that pile which the water was circulating through warming as it went through but at the same time as shown by my graphs the pile was cooling as the water was warming it was soaking the heat out of the pile so the problem was on a sunny day it was right because the solar there would help boost the temperature of the pile with the hotter water running through it but after three or four days of cloudy weather um, the only source of heating in the system was this one pile and the pile was just constantly dropping in temperature to the point where I think it got down to about 15 degrees at the lowest. So what I noticed on the graphs were when I turned the system off and there was no circulation in this first pile, the temperature of the pile rapidly went up. So I had the thought if I put two piles in, as you see here now, I will have water circulating through one pile for a certain amount of time controlled by a timer after a certain amount of time, once that pile has gained enough heat, I will switch over. So the first pile will flow through for, I'm going to start with now, next in the video for 24 hours. I'll have water flowing through this pile for 24 hours, which in turn will be cooling that pile, while this pile is gaining temperature and heating. After 24 hours, this pile is going to turn off, and via valves, here's the valves, they're both automatically controlled by a timer set to 24 hours as you can see it's currently on compost 2 so the water at the moment is flowing through number 2 over there so after 24 hours it's going to switch over via the valves and the water is going to flow through compost 1 and while it throws through compost 1 compost 1 will probably cool as shown by the graphs we'll find out that's what happened last time and compost 2 should heat so that over time I don't have this problem of the heat dropping off I have a backup pile all the time so I can switch between piles and allow the other pile to heat up so while we're here here's the basic system here I have obviously the coils in this pile the coils in that pile it's all unscrewable here so I just unscrew the taps when I need to change the piles out and I unscrew these taps when I need to change that pile out have some indicators there, some LEDs. As you can see, compost 2 is currently where the water's flowing. Um, solar is just when the water is flowing up into the solar heater, that LED comes on. And I also, if you can see here, have a fan down the bottom. So that fan is running through this white bit of pipe here into this pipe, which goes right down to the bottom of the pile, as shown in another video. And at the bottom of the pile I've filled it with loose wood chips which have lots of air gaps in it and when I switch that on I haven't done it yet but I'll, I'll show you in the video when I do do it um, I'll pump air through it for a certain amount of time to aerate the pile and that might save me having to turn the pile it might also heat the pile up more um, we'll find out um, being that the bacteria in there after a while will need oxygen so that saves me turning the piles so we'll see how that goes
Yeah, so an update on the situation here. Um, we have two days of rain and cold weather. So we don't have any sun for the system. Um, so the only source of heating is the compost pile warming system. Um, so if we go and have a look now, so the tank is currently 26 degrees still um, and dropping. Um, if we drop down a bit here, so the only source of heating at the moment is compost, the compost piles. So they're currently at 47 degrees and dropping. Um, they were at 55, 50, 55 degrees two days ago. Um, so it's putting a lot, this cold weather is putting a lot of stress on the system as the only source of heat is the compost piles. And I've currently been alternating every half an hour. So I'm not giving either pile time to rest and regain its heat because I found when I cycle every half an hour, it's, um, I'm able to extract more heat. I think the reason for that is because I'm giving the water half an hour to sit in the pile and absorb all the heat from the pile um, instead of rapidly passing that water through the pile uh, and then that water not absorbing as much heat as it rapidly passes through the pile. So um, let's go up and have a look at the tank graphs and we can have a look at this. So these spikes in the graph here are where the water in the tank temp water tank temperature has um, spiked is where the water from the coils has been pumped into the tank just after changeover so you'll see these uh, spikes happen every 30 minutes because that's what i've got it set at 30 minutes and what i found by doing this was um, the drops weren't as steep um, see the steep bit of the end here that's how it would just carry on dropping quite steep if i didn't do the 30 minute changeover so if we zoom out a bit here and we have a look at the last couple of days, oh, that was the top temperature there, 38 degrees so far. Um, I was hoping to have a few more sunny days, but unfortunately, while the compost heating's on, I've only had four sunny days, as you can see by the spikes. So everything to the right of this line was with the compost heating running. Uh, and everything to the left of this way here was with only solar, so we didn't have any compost running. So as you can see, it bottomed out without the compost at about 13 degrees Celsius in the water tank. Um, and then when it was switched on, the compost heating was switched on, um, I was we generated a lot more heat and we um, the temperature just kept going up. Until now, of course, when uh, we're, you know, we're looking at four days of... Um, of uh, clouds so it's going to be a real test for the system um, the next couple of days and hopefully it doesn't drop down too much and uh, yeah i'll keep you posted on that yes yeah, so i thought i'd give a bit of an update here um same as it's now six and outside is 3.8 degrees so it's um quite cold and the compost is doing all right but it is struggling um the tank, if we have a look, has just taken a turn for the worse. Um, if we zoom out a bit, <clears throat> you'll see it started dropping quite steep there. Um, so what I thought I might do is go and turn the air pump on and for two hours pump a bit of air in that compost and see if it can bring it back to life a bit and uh, pump a bit of oxygen in there and get that bacteria cooking. Um, it might not be a good idea doing it when it's 3 degrees because I'm going to be pumping that cold air in the heat but I'm willing to give it a go just to see how it goes um, so I'll go ahead and do that now So an update on the situation, um, it's now midday the day after, it's currently 8.4 degrees outside. Um, last night we got right down to 2 degrees um, at the coldest, um, as you can see on the graph there. And it stayed like that most of the night. Um, so as you would imagine the compost piles were struggling, um, they're currently down to about 38 degrees each as you can see here. Um, and the water tank is sitting at 23.15 degrees and dropping. Um, as for pumping the air through the compost piles yesterday, um, it didn't cause the piles to go back up in heat, which is actually not surprising considering the, it was so cold in, on the outside, but 
it did show up on the graphs both the graphs for each pile um, which is a positive thing because the probe is at the top of the pile and if it, and if that detects the change in temperature it um, shows that the air is actually flowing through the whole pile and making it to the top so you can just see it here a little bump at 1800 which is exactly when I turned that fan on yesterday there was a bit of a dip here um, not surprising considering it's pumping cold air in and then at eight o'clock when I turn that off you can see there's it flattened out a bit more again um, this shows in both the piles so um, that's a good thing it tells me that the air is going right through the pile but it's still cold and the piles are still struggling and they haven't been able to heat back up yet so um, we've still got all of today of rain and cold and tomorrow of rain so hopefully after that we have some sunny days so i'll update you later on on the situation so a bit of an update on the situation here it's been a very stressful week for these two piles last four days um, they're now both currently down to 31 degrees um, so i turned off this pile pile two this morning hoping it would go back up in temperature and it didn't actually go back up it did slow down to about 0.1 degree sorry 0.10 of a degree temperature drop per hour whereas this pile that still has the circulation is dropping at about 0.4 per hour but it didn't go up so I think what's happening is it needs a bit of a mix it needs a little bit of food it needs a bit of nitrogen put into it so I've got a whole lot of coffee grounds here and I'm going to mix those coffee grounds into both the piles <clears throat> and give it a bit of a mix up on the surface and spray that all in and hopefully that'll just trickle down and feed all the bacteria with a bit of nitrogen and hopefully that will kick start the heating again um, if you do a bit of a google it says that generally five to seven days is when compost piles are at their hottest um, so it's currently seven days now so i think that might be having an effect too so i'm gonna i'm gonna do, go ahead and do that now and we'll see how that goes in the next few days yeah so i've just started turning it over and i found out what the problem is uh, as you can see, the problem is it's too dry. It's, there's no moisture in that. Um, so I think that's the problem here. I think it's run out of moisture. So um, I'll give that a good wet, mix in some coffee grounds, give it a feed, and hopefully uh, it'll be back in action in the next couple of days. Got a bit of sun coming too, so that's good. So I'll uh, update you later on. So an update, um, it's been two days now since I changed those compost piles. Um, they're now doing better than what they did the first time. <clears throat> so they've now got moisture in them. Um, I've added coffee grounds for nitrogen. Currently it's 9.20. Uh, compost 2 is 54.5 and compost 1 is now 59.23. They're both climbing. So um, that's better than last time. Uh, outside at the moment is currently 6.4 degrees. Um, and the water tank is currently 32.16 um, so for the last two nights I still haven't had sunny days I've had partly cloud um, but for the last two nights I haven't dropped below 29 degrees so that compost has been maintaining um, the water tank above I'm gonna let me zoom out here above 29 uh, degrees um, <coughs> oh, sorry 28 degrees so you can see the alternations there, the hourly alternations. Um, and it hasn't dropped below 29 degrees for two nights. So uh, so that's good. Yep, it's day six now of the second mix. Compost piles are still above 50 degrees but cooling. Uh, they are still maintaining the water above 29. Um, and what I'm about to do is triple the size of the coils and add an extra 50 meters per pile um, meaning there will be 75 meter coil in each pile as you can see there so let's do that so my only concern with that is it might introduce a little bit more cooling in the piles being that there's going to be a lot more cold water in there but at the same time it might also boost the heating so let's find out and um, next thing is I'm going to also mix in a little bit more coffee grounds and some horse manure so 
I hope the bacteria doesn't mind caffeine too much because it's about to get another big dose of that so I'll go and do that now and we'll see what happens. So some good news, um, the extra 50 meters of coil has made a big difference in the heating output of the system. The piles are currently 46 and 45 degrees, slowly rising, not as fast as with 25 meters of coil though, um, and the tank is being maintained at 33.5, um, which is about 4.5 degrees higher than what it was with only having 25 meters of coil in per pile. So you can see the little um, steps here on the graph, that's the change over every 30 minutes. Um, and you can see it's been maintaining it above 33 degrees there all night. That was yesterday, that's today. Um, ignore the little dip here, that was cold water and being introduced to the system from the solar water heater this morning. However, we didn't get sun, um, so it didn't spike. It, it, the sun went away straight afterwards. Um, so it's that's a four and a half degrees improvement on um, having 25 meters of coil. So it's not looking good on the weather front in the next week, um, it's all clouds, we're not going to have a sunny day, so I'm not going to be able to beat the 38 degree record that the tank has had so far, however, knowing that the, t the solar heater will boost the system by 13 degrees on a full sunny day, um, doing some maths on that, I could get the system up to 46 degrees Celsius water if I had a sunny day, um, but we're not going to have that for a week or so, and I've decided now I'm going to divert the water back into the greenhouse beds, so it's not going. we're not going to be able to, we're going to have a little bit of losses as the heat water is circulated through those greenhouse beds, it's going to cool the water a little bit, but at the same time it's going to warm the beds, so the next part of the video is we'll see how good the system is at heating the greenhouse beds, um, so let's go and do that. Wow, so it's been 16 hours since I switched on the greenhouse bed circulation to heat the greenhouse bed. Um, and as this graph here shows, over the last 16 hours, those beds have warmed up 10 degrees Celsius. They're still rising. Um, they're currently up to 27.48 from where they were last night at about just over 18. So um, this graph here shows that the heating system really does heat these beds. Here's the trend over the last couple of weeks. This point here is where I switched it off last time. Um, and as you can see, it's just, it really does work. So I'm really happy with that. Um, the water tank is currently now being maintained at about almost 29 degrees. Um, this is because of the drop from the losses now from circulating through these greenhouse beds. So here we were yesterday, um, we were maintaining the water tank at about almost 34. Where the graph drops here is where we switched on the greenhouse bed circulation. And as you can see from there, it's dropped down about four or so, five, five or so degrees in the water tank, but it is maintaining still above 28 degrees. In fact, it's actually rising a wee bit there. Um, probably because the composts are still rising a wee bit um, and this is all done with no sun so this heating of these beds is just purely the compost heat recovery system so I'm very happy with that. So conclusions for how effective the current system is at heating water we can see on the graph here that the system in its current state ignoring this drop here which is where the greenhouse beds were switched on so there's losses in the system from that um, counting only the system losses, um, the compost heat recovery system in its current state can maintain water at about 34 degrees provided the compost stays warm. So if we add what the solar heater can add to that, which is 13 degrees on a full 7 hour sunny day, um, the system in its current state could heat water to currently about 46 degrees. Um, so what I plan on doing in the next month or so is I have an upgrade I'm going to carry out to the compost heating system that I think will add another four or five degrees heating potential um, bringing the heating from the compost circulation up to maintaining water at about 38 degrees Celsius so if I combine this with what the solar water heater can boost it up to which is 13 degrees extra and we do a bit of addition on that um, theoretically I should be able to get 50 degrees Celsius water from this next upgrade that I plan on carrying out. So I'll keep you posted on that and um, hopefully um, we get some good results from that in the next month or so. So um, yeah. 
um, yeah, as for using sand in the solar water heater as a sand battery, um, it's giving me an extra 1.5 degrees heating for one hour, so it does seem to be having a little bit of a positive effect there. Um, I know the sand will take longer to heat up inside of the metal, um, but there's not a lot of sand in there anyway, and if that sand wasn't there anyway, it would only be air at the back of those pipes. Air is a worse conductor of heat than sand, and sand holds more heat than air, so that's why I've gone with the sand there. I know metal shavings would also be better, um, but I don't have metal shavings and they're quite heavy. Um, what I do actually plan on doing soon is an upgrade using oil, um, and we'll see how oil goes. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd clarify that anyway, so yeah.